Hi, my name is Jonathan Venn. I'm the author of the Muse Storytelling Game. In this video, I'm going to take a few minutes to show you how to use Vassal Engine to play an online game of Muse. This is a fun way to keep in touch with friends that are far away. You can find out more about Muse at ben.ca slash muse. And more about Vassal Engine at vassalengine.org. Vassal Engine is free and open source software that lets you play board games and card games online with friends. To set up Vassal Engine, you will need to download and run the installer. The full instructions are on this page. Next, you will need to download the Muse module. Try clicking on the module section and searching for Muse. As you can see, it's the first hit. From here, the download link is right there for the vmod file, which is what you need to play. When you're ready to play, start up Vassal Engine. Before you start playing online, make sure that you and your friends have the same version of Vassal Engine and the same Muse module version. Select Help, About Vassal, to see its version. In my case, that's 3.2.17. Next, I press File, Open Module. And there I can select the vmod file that I just downloaded. Now you can see the version here, 2.1. So make sure your friends have the same version of this as well. Now I click on open. <clears throat> it loads up. Now in the welcome screen, choose look for a game online. And click on finish. Now in the window, on the right hand side, server controls are, are visible here. Now these can be shown or hidden using the server control button over here. In the active games window, name a new name and press enter. Select file, new game. Select any color you want. And now you see the virtual game board. If you want to join a friends game, the procedure is pretty similar. Open the Muse module by double-clicking on it or right-clicking and selecting Open Module. Select Look for a Game Online and click Finish. Now, in the Active Games panel, find your friend's game. and it, You'll know what it is because you'll be talking to each other, hopefully. And there's my friend Elena. Right-click on the game Phoenix in this case and click on join room. Now pick any color you want and click on finish. There. Now I'm in Elena's game. Let's look at what you can do in the Vassal Engine module. Click the ace of spades of your color to show your hand. Only you can see your private hand so it's safe to flip over cards here. You can drag and drop cards from anywhere into your hand. Press Ctrl F to flip them over or right click and select flip. You can do this for one card at a time or click and drag to select more than one card. Notice the black border that tells you that a card has been selected. Right now these two are selected, now all of them are selected and now only one of them is selected. Now let's talk about the different game pieces. You can click here to show and hide the game pieces. That's tokens and labels. In all, we've got cards, answer sheets, tokens, and labels. They're all interactive with drag and drop. You can right click on any of them to find out what else you can do with them, whether it's discarding an answer sheet or renaming a label. Use labels to mark a player's side on the board. For example, if you need a specific answer sheet, you can right click on the deck and select Draw Specific Cards. You can control click to select more than one and then click and drag to fish them out.
Similarly, if you need to draw many cards at once, you can right click on the deck and select draw multiple cards. I can draw six cards at once. If you grab a stack of cards and drag them to your hand, they automatically spread out. Dragging them back to the table puts them back into a neat stack. If you hold the mouse over a stack of cards, then you will get an automatic count. If you flip over the cards, you will see them all easily. Mousing over tokens will also give you the count. So if I drag over three tokens, and then I mouse over, you'll see that there are three, no problem. And if you need to fish out a specific card from a stack, you can just double click on the stack. And now I can see all the cards. So I know the lowest one is this three of clubs. The highest one is this queen of hearts. Double click on a stack again to bring it back to normal. And finally, you can combine answer sheets with cards or tokens. So for example, I can take this yes to sheet and I can put cards on it. Now I know that there are four cards on that sheet and I can take a crisis sheet and I can put tokens on it. So now that crisis sheet has three tokens. The last thing I want to show you is the special showdown board. The showdown board is here. Now in this example, Jonathan has five cards on yes one and Elena has four cards on no one. I can double click on each stack to find the lowest card and then bring it forward. So flip over, double click, and now I can see, yes, clearly the six of spades is the lowest card. Similarly here, flip over, uh, it's the Ten of Clubs. So currently Elena is winning. Now let's say my friend Greg, who's also playing, decides to support. He puts his King of Spades down and then adds his name to the list of supporters. Now let's say that's the end of the showdown. Notice how the showdown board keeps track of how many cards are on it. This is really handy since now we know that the loser of the showdown can draw 10 cards. You can clear the board by selecting all the game pieces and pressing Ctrl D. Or you can just right click and select the Ctrl D action and it'll apply to everything that you selected. Now finally, you can save a game of Muse at any time by clicking File, Save Game.